And remember I've made the statement that almost all religious teachings on earth are related to development of natural love. In fact, oftentimes the development in natural love is about detuning from your passions and desires. Refer to that? Detuning from your passions and desires. In other words, I don't know if any of you, did you have a visit by Dalai Lama uh, recently? Uh, we did in Australia. He talks about the detuning from his passions and desires. He was saying how he still occasionally looks at a woman and feels that sexual urge, but he says that it's not, you know, it's few and far between, basically. Now, anything that causes you to detune from your passion and desire is not in harmony with divine love. Now, that's a, I've made a very blanket statement there. But when you think about it, for example, who created sex? God. So if you have to detune from sex to grow spiritually, does that make sense? No. Does that make sense? Now, on the natural love path, there are literally thousands and thousands of theories about how to progress spiritually. And one of the major theories is that Eastern philosophy that you need to become without desire to be blissful. Does that make sense? In other words, they feel that if you have desire, then you can never be blissful. And a lot of times they teach you about detuning from your passions and desires. Well, the divine love path is about tuning into your passions and desires and bringing all of your passions and desires in harmony with divine love. Now, what happens with many of the so-called avatars and everything, almost every spirit who's in the sixth sphere calls themselves an avatar. They name themselves one, yeah. Well, you feel pretty good about yourself, right? By the time you get to the sixth sphere. <laughs> right? Well, what's the difference between saying that and saying, I'm God? And there's many that say they're God there, right? right. So, so they actually feel they are, you know, they know the secrets of the universe. That's what they believe. Now, the spirits, ironically, the spirits that are on this path continue to say, I am God's child. <laughs> right? And they continue to say, I am your brother and sister. So they don't put themselves above you. Does that make sense? The spirits on a natural love path will certainly put themselves above you. And they'll call themselves avatars or you know, all sort of teachers or whatever else they call. You, right? So on this path, often what happens is we get to a stage where we are so proud of our achievements right, that we want to let everybody else know what we've achieved too, right? On this path, it's totally different. You're a lot more humble than that. You just view yourself as another child of God. Now, many of those, what happens to the spirit, to people on earth? So here's half of the soul on earth in a spirit form, right? And a material form. Right? Now, let's say that's a masculine soul. This very much occurs in India lots of times. These avatars connect with the souls of people on earth. And actually, if you know what mediumship is, don't you? All of you know about mediumship? Um, I'll, uh, let's uh, define uh, it as when a person is a medium. If a person is a medium, what it means is that they have a clear, or maybe a semi-clear, connection with, spirit, with the spirit world and can hear and feel impressions and see spirits. Now, I'm here to tell you that all of you can be that. But some people are born with that. Just like some people are born artists, some people are born musicians, and some people are born with that natural ability stronger than others. Right? Now, when you're very, very young in the medium, there's spirits who, on the, particularly on the, the sixth bit, on the natural love path, who will connect with you because they see it as an opportunity to teach everyone around you. Does that make sense? Now, 
what a lot of spirits have done, and particularly in Eastern lands like India and so forth, they actually connect to the child when it's when even sometimes before its birth, because the mother is open to it. They connect to the child before birth, and they remain connected with that child for the rest of its life on earth. Right? And they continually channel and information, and also healing, and all all sorts of other things through that child as it's growing up. Well, it's a good thing in the sense that it uh, is certainly helping the human race raise their level of love, natural love. It's not a good thing if you're looking at the issue of free will, because it's interfering with the free will of the child uh, in, in a way that a, a, a divine love spirit would not do. Does that make sense? The divine love spirit wouldn't choose to do this. It can certainly be distracting. All of you have heard of Say Baba? Yeah. 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 Ha, what have you heard about? You would have heard conflicting things, right? Yeah. On one hand, you would hear that he does all these wonderful things. And on the other hand, you hear that there's some sexual things that he gets up to. But they're not so good, right? So what's going on? What's going on is Say Baba himself is in a first sphere condition. But he has a spirit with him who's in a sixth gear condition, and that spirit is constantly connected with him. 